So the first thing here is you have to create a user account. Uh, and you'll see from this slide here, I actually have down uh, go to login.gov. Um, I'm going to be saying sam.gov a lot. And, and basically what the government's done is they've kind of used this login.gov as a um, as a database for, I don't know, six or seven different databases. So once you log in, um, you're kind of in there. And so what they do with sam.gov is they distinguish there's a user account and then there's an entity account. And so the user would be like myself, Brian Wallace, uh, and the entity account would be like Eastern Maine Development Corporation, the, the business. Um, the idea is you might have a, you know, multiple users need to have access to a single business or as a business owner, maybe I have multiple businesses that uh, I need access to just for one user. Uh, so they separate those two out. And so really what we got to do here is set up a, a user account. If you go to login.gov, there's a create an account right here where that red arrow is. You select that uh, and you get taken over to uh, this page here where basically you provide an email address, uh, you create a password, uh, and then you set up an authentication method. Uh, I usually tell folks go towards using a cell phone or a, a landline phone number. That's the easiest one. They give you a few other options, but when you use the authentication method, they'll just text you a one-time authorization code when you're trying to log in. And that works out pretty pretty smooth. Um, so then you, you scroll down, you hit submit, and, and that's basically it. They take you through that, that authentication process. You've logged in, you're good to go. Uh, the next part, and I'm going to um, switch here over to what I am sharing. So everyone's able to see my sam.gov, right? So from this uh, page, this is me. I, I'm logged in as a user and I've just gone over here. What I'm going to encourage people to do is if you have been in business, if you've done any you know, government contracting, federal government contracting in the past, the first thing you should probably do and maybe save you a little bit of pain is just search for yourself to see if, if you're already in there. And uh, this happened with uh, with the business, and I'm actually going to use them um, as an example here. Uh, we were talking with Nova Seafoods, and you can see it automatically completed, and it gave me their their UEI right here. So even if Nova Seafoods is and has an inactive registration or um, uh, you know, just hasn't done anything with this process yet. They've actually already been signed, uh, assigned a UEI uh, because they were in the system previously. Uh, and so one thing that had happened is, see up here where it says no matches found, even though down here it shows me there's clearly a match, um, they're right here. Uh, just try that at first and, and see if you can find your UEI because for the MTI prime fund here, that UEI is, is the important part and what you're, what you're going to need. The second part here I wanted to show folks is once you're logged in and you're at like your workspace page, you're going to have uh, these items here. You see this get started box. It's actually even, I'm going to go back and go to the home page. There's a get started box right here. And if you click on that, um, it's going to tell you, yeah, you got to sign up and, and create a, uh, a username. But once you're logged in, it brings you to this page, which is a, a little, I, I guess, poorly thought out. So clearly you're trying to register your business, but what you're really just trying to do is get a UEI. And that's the second option down. This is really meant for businesses that are competing to be a prime contractor on a federal contract. Um, and, and as a business, you might be interested in doing that. And, and I would encourage you by all means, uh, you know, you can do that. Just know that there is a lot more legwork and, and information that you need to provide. And it's a much more lengthy process than if you just select the get unique entity ID. Um, this process has been uh, challenging and I'm sure a lot of your questions have have come or, or are going to be on this. 
uh, where you put in your information and it, the the uh, the search here for the validation, it just doesn't find you. And the only option it has is go back and search again or create an incident. Um, I have since April 4th, um, when basically the government went from using a Dun & Bradstreet, a, a Dun's number, to basically using a, a government um owned and issued and controlled number that they they're setting up uh that ha happened on april 4th and i know as a counselor i've got five businesses that had to create an incident uh, because it was not able to find uh their business and that included you know <laughs> new registrants uh right through people who've been in the system for years uh, so it's been frustrating, uh, but my advice is if you create a incident, you'll see it on your on your dashboard if you go or your workspace, if you go back to the workspace page, um, it'll have an incident uh, listed right here on this page for you. Um, and I would suggest just doing that, creating an incident once, uh, because I've gone back with a client who, you know, waited a week and they hadn't had a response yet. And we created another incident. And it only seems to show the most recent one, which is different than how it worked in the past. And I don't, I don't mean to say that it, you know, just makes the the first incident disappear or, or supersedes it, uh, because they all get incident numbers uh, that can be tracked. But it doesn't feel good when the only one you can see is the most recent one, especially if you, you know, had had something you put down for the week prior. Um, so this is this is kind of a known uh, issue. It's something that we're we're all kind of you know dealing with, basically not being able to find a a match for for a business. Um, but you know, doing the the requesting a unique entity ID that UEI thing that's really all folks need to do for the MTI Prime Fund. Um, and then if it's not able to find you, just create a, an incident. That's the best, best advice I can give you for, for the time being. 